Today we're going to be making some benzaldehyde, starting from cinnamaldehyde. The cinnamaldehyde that we're starting with smells like cinnamon, and the benzaldehyde that we're ending with smells like almonds or like cherry candy. I think that the distinct change in smell from the beginning to the end is pretty cool. For this synthesis, we need to carry out something called a retroaldol reaction, which breaks apart the cinnamaldehyde. In general, retroaldol reactions are rarely used, and this is one of the few good examples of it. Normal aldol reactions, which involve the formation of carbon-carbon bonds, are much more common. I should just add that this preparation is more just for fun and educational purposes, and it really isn't an efficient way to make benzaldehyde. In terms of chemicals, we need two major ingredients, cinnamon oil and sodium carbonate. The sodium carbonate can be pretty easily made from baking soda, and I already have a video showing how. The cinnamon oil contains the cinnamaldehyde that we need, and it can be easily purchased online. I start things off by adding about 15 grams of sodium carbonate. On top of the sodium carbonate, I added in about 500 milliliters of distilled water. I turned on the stirring, and I mixed things until everything had dissolved. Just after a few minutes of stirring, everything seemed to have dissolved, and we're left with roughly a 3% solution of sodium carbonate. Into the sodium carbonate solution was then poured in about 50 grams of essential cinnamon oil. We're adding oil to water here, so most of it isn't going to dissolve, and you can see that a lot just sat at the bottom. I used a little bit of water to wash out the graduated cylinder, as well as the funnel. Because it doesn't dissolve, we're going to have to use some strong stirring to try to keep it mixed as well as possible. At this point, we've added all of our reagents to the flask, and the next step is to set it up for a reflux. Below the flask, we have a heating mantle which we'll use to heat our reaction, and in the center, we have a condenser that will recondense any vapors that come off. The heating mantle is turned on, and the contents of the flask are brought to a boil. Not too long after, we have a nice steady reflux going, and you can see that things have turned a slight orange color. At this point, we start the timer, and we want to keep this reflux going for about 8 hours. This is the overall reaction that is occurring. In the presence of sodium carbonate, cinnamaldehyde undergoes a retroaldol reaction to form benzaldehyde and acetaldehyde. The benzaldehyde that forms is an oil and it stays in the flask, but the acetaldehyde has a very low boiling point and it simply just boils away. In terms of the mechanism, it's pretty much the exact opposite of the normal aldol reaction, and I'll just go over it quickly. Under the basic conditions, a hydroxide ion first attacks the double bond and a carbon-oxygen bond is formed. The oxygen double bond that was lost is then regenerated by pulling a hydrogen from water. Another hydroxide ion comes along and deprotonates the hydroxide group. The electrons on the oxygen move to form a carbon-oxygen double bond, and the carbon-carbon bond marked in red is broken. At this point, we've actually formed our final benzaldehyde product, but the reaction isn't quite done yet. The acetaldehyde isn't fully formed, and it needs to regenerate the carbonyl by pulling a hydrogen from water. Once it does this, we have both of our final products, and the reaction's complete. After 8 hours, the reaction is taken off heat, and we set things up for a steam distillation. The setup that we have here for the steam distillation is pretty much just a simple distillation. The basic premise here is that as we heat things and boil off water, our desired benzaldehyde will co-distill. I should point out that we're not carrying out a true steam distillation here. In a real and proper steam distillation, the steam is produced in another flask and it's pumped through our reaction flask. I don't think this method gives you better results, it's just a lot more efficient in terms of how much water you have to boil off. I opted to go with the lazy method, and you'll see in a bit why that might have screwed me over. I should also point out that I could have used organic solvents to extract the benzaldehyde, but I wanted to be environmentally friendly, so I avoided using them. As the contents of the flask heat up and start to boil, we'll be boiling off mostly water, but a little bit of oil will co-distill. 
When the water and oil vapors recondense, we'll form a milky suspension of the oil in the water. This means that as long as our distillate is white, it means that oil is present and that we have to keep distilling. When there's no oil left, we should only be passing over crystal clear water and the distillation is done. After we've collected a little over 100 milliliters, I take a look at the receiving flask and we can see an oil layer at the bottom. As the distillation continues, we're going to have to occasionally replenish the water in the flask. I just poured in a large amount of hot water every so often, but the proper way is to slowly add it using an addition funnel. I honestly had no idea I was going to collect this much distillate, and I had to keep transferring it to my 5 liter beaker. It was honestly getting pretty ridiculous, but as long as the distillate was milky white, it did mean that there was still oil present. I kept thinking that it was almost done for pretty much the majority of the distillation. Even though the distillate that was coming over was still a little milky, I called it quits at around 4 liters because I just got sick of it. I actually transferred the first distillate to a separatory funnel because I didn't expect there to be so much of it. When I take a look here, I can see that there's quite a bit of oil, and I think this is actually the majority of the oil that I collected. After this initial oil came over, I think the rest of the distillation, which was something like 3 to 3.5 liters, only got trace amounts of oils, and it's not really worth it. It's also very possible that I collected so much water, because I used the lazy man method of steam distillation. I'm not exactly sure, but I feel like the proper steam distillation method is a little bit more efficient, and if we used it, we wouldn't have collected so much distillate. When we take a look at our flask after the steam distillation, we're left with a pretty dirty brown solution. I don't show it here, but for what it's worth, I let it settle out, and it didn't look like there was much oil left. If you remember from earlier, the reaction doesn't produce just benzaldehyde, but it also produces cinnamaldehyde. So what we have here in our final distillate is about 4 liters of water with cinnamaldehyde and benzaldehyde floating around in it. The suspension doesn't really settle out because the density of both of these oils is very close to water. To fix this problem, we change the density of water by dissolving a whole bunch of salt into it. The procedure here is pretty simple and what we want to do is saturate the water with salt. This part doesn't have to be exact at all, and it really doesn't matter if too much salt is added. Once we get a saturated salt solution, the density is going to be higher than the oils, so the oils will float to the top and undissolved salt will stay at the bottom. There was some oil that settled out at the bottom, but as salt is added, you can see it starts to float to the top. We need to thoroughly mix the salt into the solution, and in theory I should have used a spoon or something, but I didn't have one, so I used a broken piece of a plunger. After it's been mixed thoroughly, I let it stand for a while, and I let the oils float to the top. We're only really interested in the oil floating at the top, and the rest of the water is kind of useless. I really didn't want to have to handle this much water and pour it into a separatory funnel, so to make things easier, I first decanted it into a beaker. The contents of this smaller beaker was then transferred to a separatory funnel. I'm not sure how long I waited, but eventually things separated out. We're only really interested in our upper oil layer, so everything below this is drained off and discarded. I then had to do it a few more times, where the upper layer from the 5 liter beaker was decanted to a 1 liter, and then this was transferred to the separatory funnel. Once everything had been transferred from the 5 liter beaker, I washed the oil with an arbitrary amount of water. I mixed things around, but I made sure not to shake it too vigorously because I really didn't want to have a suspension again. After leaving it for a while, I was very relieved to see that it separated into two layers. This time, we're using distilled water and not saturated salt, so the oil is more dense and it sits at the bottom. So this bottom oil layer, which should contain cinnamaldehyde and benzaldehyde, is drained into a small Erlenmeyer flask. Just by looking at it, you can see that our oil is pretty murky, and when we take a closer look, we can see solids floating around. Most of the solid stuff is just salt that we added earlier, and it's pretty easily separated out by a vacuum filtration.
After everything had filtered through, the Erlenmeyer flask was washed with a little bit of water. So now in the flask we again have a mixture of water and oil, and we're going to have to separate it using a separatory funnel. Everything is added back to a separatory funnel, and I leave it for a bit for the layers to separate. The layers seem to separate pretty nicely, and I drained our lower oil layer into an Erlenmeyer flask. Our oil here is a little bit cloudy due to the presence of water, and we're going to have to dry things up. To do this, we add a little bit of dry magnesium sulfate, which will absorb and pull any water that might be present. The oil was then filtered through a little bit of cotton directly into a round bottom flask. The stuff that we filter through here is nice and clear, which indicates that most of the water has been removed. At this point, we still have a mixture of benzaldehyde and cinnamaldehyde, and to separate them, we carry out a fractional distillation under vacuum. The fractional distillation is nothing too fancy, and it just allows us to have a better separation between the cinnamaldehyde and the benzaldehyde. When distilling things like benzaldehyde, it's extremely important to use vacuum because we have to get rid of any oxygen present in the apparatus. If there's any oxygen present, it will react with the benzaldehyde to form benzoic acid, which is pretty undesirable. The boiling point of benzaldehyde is lower than cinnamaldehyde, so the first fraction that comes over will be the benzaldehyde. We keep collecting the benzaldehyde until eventually it stops coming over, and the temperature on the thermometer starts to increase. When the temperature increases, it means that we're going to start distilling cinnamaldehyde, so I quickly stop the distillation. When I look at the distillation flask, we have a nice red oil, and this is mostly cinnamaldehyde. In theory, I could have also purified this as well, but I didn't really have a use for cinnamaldehyde, so I decided not to spend my time doing that. Now it's time to check our final miserable yield of benzaldehyde, and when I pour it into the graduated cylinder, we see that I got around 5 milliliters. Unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what the concentration of cinnamaldehyde was in the essential oil that I used. The cinnamaldehyde content really varies depending on which portion of the tree is used to extract the oil. If the oil is extracted from the leaves, we can get a cinnamaldehyde percentage of something like 10%, but if it's extracted from the bark, we can get something like 60%. Because of this, it's very hard to determine what our actual yield is. If the oil I used was very low percentage, then our yield is good, but if I used a very high percentage oil, then my yield is just terrible. In the end though, the point of this preparation wasn't really to get benzaldehyde, and it was mostly to just explore the retroaldol reaction. Even if we find out that the yield was very good, this reaction takes a lot of work, and it's not very efficient. In the future, I'm going to post two other videos on much better methods to get benzaldehyde. The first is the distillation of bitter almond oil, which is actually almost just pure benzaldehyde to start off with. And the second is the oxidation of benzyl alcohol using ammonium persulfate. This second reaction has actually already been done by ChemPlayer, and I'll post a link to that in the description if you guys want to check it out. As usual, I'd like to extend a big thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, and especially those who donate $5 or more. Anyone who donates and supports me on Patreon gets to see my videos 24 hours before I release it to YouTube, and if you donate $5 or more, you get your name at the end of the video like you see here. In the next few months though, I want to work on my Patreon page a lot, and I want to get more rewards going, and maybe even get some higher tier ones, and I want to also offer some Patreon exclusive content. Also, as usual, here's the videos that I've currently filmed and the ones I plan to work on. If you have any suggestions or ideas, please feel free to leave them in the comments.